This is Jeannie Costello, and I want to talk to you today because you were one of the very first people that helped me get into film stuff because you worked at the cable access television station in Durango, Colorado, where I am from. And so I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you got how you got where you were when I met you, which was working for a cable tele cable access television station, and sort of maybe you could talk a little bit about just what motivated you in the very beginning to get into film as a woman. Sure, sure. I mean, you know, I actually um, I worked at a film company in New York City. I'm from Durango, right? But I and I fell into that job. I basically finished an internship for a friend. Oh, okay. And I worked in film, but I didn't. I didn't create film. I didn't. You know, it was, it was a distribution company. But I looked at a lot of film. I looked at a lot of scripts, and I had a lot of interest in it. And then I decided I'm ready to move back to Durango. And I came okay. back to Durango, and and everybody was like, "Well, you worked in film. You know, do something great. Like that. Why don't you make a video for our organization?" I'd never actually done the technical side of it. Uh huh. And uh, at the time, I got involved with San Juan Citizens Alliance, which is a local, a local advocacy group on mostly environmental issues. Okay. And we had a lot of oil and gas drilling in the area, and I had a friend come with a camera for two weeks to visit me. We interviewed people, and you know, we got a lot of shots of, of oil and gas, you know, drilling rigs. And, and then she left, and I had all this footage. I'd never, you know, done it, the technical side of it, and. I went to our local college and I said, "Can I use your equipment?" and 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 I just learned it on the fly and and we had a pretty good product. It was and what really did you? Exciting. How did you use your product in the end? You know, we we went out. And we showed uh, you know state legislators. We showed we we showed it to people in the community. It was for me great making a video. I I made a video. It was a creative process. I think prior to that, I'd never actually you know made something uh -huh. and it was very exciting it yeah was, it was a wonderful process <clears throat> it was just having a couple of these projects back to back and they were really successful and we thought we love doing that and we like advocacy video and so very naive in some ways <laughs> like we're gonna start a nonprofit. <laughs> yeah no big deal so myself and two other women like the founding mothers we started this this Nonprofit video art center. What we didn't have is we didn't have the distribution component. We had the the cable service in yeah. our area, and we had government access, but we didn't have public access. Okay. And so it was clear that it just didn't make sense for people to make videos if they had nowhere to show right. people. What's the any, point? In, right. What's the point if you don't have a venue? It's, it's a big investment. It's a time and effort and money. Absolutely. Right. And so, so we went to the city and said we want to start this, and they're like. <laughs> they said, okay, and they gave us zero funding the first year. They're like, great, go to yeah, it with go nothing. Go for it, yeah. From the very beginning, did they give you a channel to broadcast yes. on? Yes, yes. That was the so, thing they said so they, they already do. had the channel. Okay, it and existed. We had, to get, we had to basically get authorization from the city to, to operate use it. that channel. Got it. Right. And for anybody that doesn't know what a cable access television station is, could you just give a little yeah, description? Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically when a, a cable company comes into a community, Right, they're getting access to communities' public right-of-ways right. in order to provide commercial television to a community. And the community has the right to negotiate for, and not all communities do this, which I think it should be mandatory myself, but <clears throat> they have the right to, to negotiate for public channels, right. called PEG, Public Education and Government Access okay. Channels. Okay. Right, that, and they, they also negotiate for they usually get uh, some kind of rental fees, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, which comes in the form of, of, you know, a percentage of their gross revenues that go to the city in order to use those right-of-ways. Okay, so the cable and station <coughs> pays the city rent for using their exactly. public space. Exactly. Or so their pay, public broadcasting space. Exactly. And so communities who are interested in kind of offsetting that, that you know, they've here, here are these commercial providers who, right. who get access into our homes. If they want to offset with sort of community uh, media services and you know, to give back to communities that opportunity to use that medium to get um, their own voice yeah, out exactly there. and so there is a potential revenue source that can be dedicated by yeah. local yeah. governments you know it's, we have a government access and they they show like city council meetings and uh, other things that are going on in the city and actually our government access does a lot of community programming as well mm -hmm. and then uh, we don't have an education channel though many communities do mm -hmm. what we have is is the second channel which is public and education right um, and and it's it's a great it's a brilliant idea because you're required to give 
true public access. And what that means is that we don't decide the content. Anybody right. can come in, use the resource, and we can't say no based on content. It's a truly democratic so people media. absolutely can shape the message. Right. That whatever they're passionate about, whatever they care about, right. they can they can take that to their local right. public access channel. Which is why I was able to come in with exactly. my idea and pay you guys membership dues that were like Minuscule right. I mean, compared you know, to what I got, twenty five dollars a year. A year, twenty five dollars a year. To... And I got to use your editing equipment, your cameras. Right. I got to, I got help anytime I needed it, like technical right. help. With I mean, I learned how to do what I do on twenty five dollars a year. That's great. And and for me, like the other thing is like you know, uh, sort of that belief in can I do this? That fear of technology. It's yes. like, you know, I I did it that way myself. Yeah. You know, it's like I learned it on the fly. You know, it's like. I made a lot of mistakes and it's like, well, I've learned a lot from that. Yeah. And, uh, and then you move on.